Hello and welcome to another video where today I'll be running through advanced variances as part of standard costing and within this session I'll be focusing specifically on sales variances. Firstly a quick reminder of what standard costing actually is. A standard cost for a product or service is a predetermined cost per unit set under specific working criteria. The idea behind using standard costing is that it gives the business greater control by being able to compare the actual cost of producing products to the standard cost. This also ties in with budgeting because by having a standard cost of producing one product it easily allows the business to scale this up or down depending on how many units it plans to produce. This then has the potential to allow for budget managers to be assessed clearly between the actual and standard costs as part of a performance review. As you can probably guess from the above, standard costing is more suitable for a business who produces a high number of identical or at least very similar products than it would be where the product or service is tailored specifically to each customer. When a business calculates its sales variances, it will split them into two separate variances, the sales price variance and the sales volume variance. Let's now take a look at each of these in more detail. We'll start off by looking at the sales price variance. And the question that's been asked when calculating the sales price variance is did each unit sell for more or less than the budgeted selling price? If each unit sold for more than the standard price, then the business will have a favorable sales price variance. And if it sold for less than the standard price, then there will be an adverse sales price variance. To calculate the sales price variance, we need to multiply the number of units sold by the standard price per unit. This will give us how much the units that were sold should have sold for. We then compare this figure to how much they actually sold for with the difference between the two being our sales price variance. Let's put this into an example. The standard sales price of product X was £72. During the month of May, Hawkins Limited sold 1,266 units of product X for £78.50 each. Calculate the sales price variance. Right then, so to calculate this, we'll take our standard price per unit and multiply this by the number of units sold. This would therefore be £72 multiplied by 1,266 units to give us a total of £91,152. According to our standard price, this is how much the business should have received for selling the number of units they did. We'll now calculate how much the business actually sold these for. This would be the actual price of £78.50 multiplied by the number of units sold of 1,266, which gives us 99,381. The difference between the amount the business should have received, i.e. the 91,152, and the amount they actually received, the 99,381, gives us a price variance of 8,229, with the actual sales being higher than the standard, this would mean that the 8,229 would be a favourable variance. Now moving on to the sales volume variance, which is measuring the change in profit or contribution as a result of the difference between actual and budgeted sales quantity. There are actually three different ways in which we can calculate the sales volume variance. Price, contribution and profit. The technique for each of these is very similar, with only the final multiplication differing for each method. To calculate the sales volume variance then, we do the difference in the budgeted number of units sold and the actual number of units sold. We then multiply this by either, depending on how the business decides, price, contribution if the business is focusing on marginal costing, or profit if the business is focusing on absorption costing. Let's take a look at a previous example and calculate the sales volume variance. Hawkins Limited had budgeted to sell 1,150 units of product X, but actual sales were 1,266 units. The standard cost card for product X is on screen now. 
So the sales price per unit is £72. Direct materials is £14. Direct labour is £22. Variable overheads is £8. And fixed overheads is £16. Calculate the sales volume variance. First using the sales price, then under marginal costing, and then under absorption costing. The first step under any of these methods will start off the same. Find the difference between the budgeted sales units and the actual sales units, which would be 1,266 minus 1,150 to give you a difference of 116 units. This means we sold 116 more units than originally budgeted for. We now need to turn this into a monetary value for each of the options above. Firstly, A. Using the sales price, we would multiply the 116 units by the standard sales price per unit of £72 to give us a volume variance using sales price of 8,352. B. Now under marginal costing, we multiply the 116 units by the contribution per unit. Remember that to calculate contribution per unit, we need to do the selling price minus all variable costs. It would therefore be 72 pounds minus 14, minus 22, minus eight, to give us a contribution of 28. The final step then is to multiply our difference of 116 units by the contribution per unit of 28 pounds to give a sales volume variance under marginal costing of 3,248 pounds. C. Now under absorption costing, we multiply our 116 units by the profit per unit. The profit per unit being calculated as the selling price minus all costs per unit, including fixed overheads. This would therefore be 72 minus 14 minus 22 minus 8 minus 16 to give us a profit per unit of 12. The final step then is to multiply our difference of 116 units by the profit per unit of £12 to give us a sales volume variance under absorption costing of £1,392. Now that covers how to calculate both sales variances. The final part to look at is the possible cause of variances. And again, these can be split between the price variance and the volume variance. But do be aware that the two can often be linked. Some of the common reasons for sales price variances are as follows. Improved or reduced quality of the product, higher or lower customer demand, or higher or lower product availability within the market. Then some of the common reasons for sales volume variances could include higher or lower product pricing, a successful marketing campaign, improved or reduced quality, in competitor products. And that wraps up this video on advanced sales variances. Hope you found it useful and if so, hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks again for watching, I'll catch you in the next one.